Hey, I'm Michael, and in this episode, I am showing you how you can quickly and easily do a Dollar Tree door hanger DIY with a Cricut cutting machine. So let's get crafty. All right, y'all, I am so excited for this one. This has been this has been one that I have wanted to do for quite some time now. So for starters, to kick off some of this Cricut Christmas project magic, let's go ahead and start with this pizza pan. Now, this is from Dollar Tree. If you follow any Dollar Tree projects online, any Dollar Tree crafts, I'm sure you've probably seen this thing used a million and one times, and for good reason. We'll actually be diving into this a little bit more here lately, but before we actually even do that, what we will need to do is go ahead and paint this. Now, I did use the StarCraft chalk and mineral paint, the white chalk and mineral paint. Um, I did get this from 143 Vinyl, and I also went over this with the brand new StarCraft Pure Coat in the gloss like this top coat sealant to seal all of this in. And this is what we have right here once everything is applied and fully dry. We will also need a scarf, also from the Dollar Tree. And I'm using this red buffalo plaid or buffalo check, tomato, tomato, whatever you wanna call it, completely fine by me. But we'll be using, actually, we'll be using two of these little scarves right here, also from the Dollar Tree. We will also need a hot glue gun. I'm using this guy right here, as well as a heavy duty glue stick right back here. We'll also need some vinyl, right? Now, for me, I am using my favorite permanent adhesive vinyl, and that is the StarCraft HD. The HD stands for high durability, and this stuff is just so amazing. All of the colors come in both a glossy and a matte finish, so you actually have an option to choose whether you want a glossy sheen or like a matte sheen like this right here. My personal favorite is the matte sheen, but I mean, you do you boo, whatever's gonna float your boat and tickle your pickle, that's what you go with. Personally, I like the matte, but if you like the glossy, go for it. Oh, let me just say this real quick about the vinyl and the chalk paint and that StarCraft Pure Coat Top Coat Sealant. All of that came from 143vinyl.com. Now, I love working with them. They are an amazing, amazing company. Their customer service is like out of this world, which is why I love working with them so much. But if you are a crafty.net member, you can actually get an everyday 10% off discount to 143vinyl.com. So I've heard from so many of you all saying that you all actually save money with your crafty.net membership. Basically, the membership pays for itself and then some, which is just mind-blowingly awesome. I'm just so, so, so extremely glad that that is the case because that is one of the goals that we had whenever we started Crafty.net. Now, if you're brand new around here and you have no idea what I'm talking about with Crafty.net, let me show you real quick by coming over here to our screen. And this is the homepage of Crafty.net. And basically with this, you get unlimited access, unlimited exclusive access to thousands upon thousands upon thousands of SVG cut files, sublimation files, Glowforge like laser files, fonts are coming soon. I mean, it's just the whole kit and caboodle for only $9.99 per month. Plus you get that everyday 10% off discount to 143vinyl.com. Honestly, the, the benefits of this, I don't have time to dive into everything, but you should check it out. It is just so, so, so freaking amazing. But let me go ahead and dive into this right here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do a search for snowman. All right, so I'm just looking for a file somewhat like this right here, but these are more of like a cartoony style face of a snowman, which is great. Like I really like that. However, I'm thinking about going towards this one right here, this arabesque ornament. Uh, with the snowman on it. Now, I know that this is made for the arabesque ornament. However, we can still work this for what we need it for with our door hanger today. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and do this one click download, and then we can go ahead and bring that over into Cricut Design Space. All right, so here we are on Cricut Design Space, and as you can see, I have already uploaded this and brought this into my Cricut Design Space canvas. Now, if you are brand new to this entire world and you're not entirely sure how to do that, I got you covered. I will actually link a playlist right up here, as well as down in that description box below. Just make sure that you know how to go through and actually download these files from crafty.net. But what I'm gonna do first off is come over here to the right-hand side of this page, to this layers panel, and basically go through here and just, just remove the things that we're not gonna need for our particular project today. Essentially, I am just wanting the face of the snowman and that's it. So by coming over here, I can actually click on this little eye icon to basically hide the different layers. So 
right there I just hit the the background layer like the damask style shape and then I'm gonna come up here we're gonna leave the carrot nose and we'll go ahead and hide the scarf and as far as the top hat and the little buttons what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click on that layer and then come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and click on contour now I can go through here and basically just kind of click on the items that I want to hide. So by clicking on that little top hat, as you can see, it turns like a darker gray over here on the right hand side of this page, meaning that it is basically turned off. It's not going to be showing up on our page anymore. So I can also come down here and click these other little buttons like so, and then just click outside of this contour box. And just like that, we have our snowman face, basically exactly what we were wanting to use for the project, or at least what I'm wanting to use for the, my project. But now we need to go ahead and resize this to fit onto our actual pizza pan, right? On this right here. Now, I do wanna point out that I'm not gonna be measuring the outer perimeter of the pizza pan. I'm only gonna be measuring the actual part of the pizza pan that I can actually put my design on, which is from this little groove right here over to this little groove right here. Basically the main surface, the main portion of the pizza pan. Now I have measured this and it is around the 11 inch mark. So what I'm gonna do is come over here to the left hand side of the page, click on shapes and I'm gonna open up a circle. There we go. And what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and resize this to be around that same measurement. So around 11 inches. So I'll go ahead and come up here towards the top of the canvas, change that to, to an 11, hit enter and there we go. So. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and right click it and then click on send to back. Now I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom left hand side of the page and just zoom out. And we can now go ahead and grab our little snowman face, bring it over here onto this little background. Now that is a little hard to see, right? Because of the, the black of the snowman's face on the dark gray background of the circle. So let's go ahead and change the color of this. The color, as you all know, I've said a million times, the color of it does not amount to a hill of beans. However, if it makes it easier for you to see here on the page, or it helps you visualize what the end project is gonna look like, then by all means, go for it. So I'll come up here towards the top left-hand corner, click on this little color swatch, and let's just change this to like a light gray for now. There we go. And now we can go ahead and grab our little snowman face, and then grab this little recess handle, and then just drag this outwards like so. All right, so I'm thinking something like that should do the trick. I'm actually really liking that. And I'm also considering the fact that it will have a little hat on as well as a little scarf. So just keep that in mind as well. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is come over here, click on this little eye icon next to this circle, next to our template. And what I'll do now is come up here towards the top right hand corner and click on make it. All right, so this is the matte preview screen. Nothing really to do here. Um, but basically just come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and click on continue. Now since I am using StarCraft HD permanent adhesive vinyl, my favorite cut setting with the original Cricut Maker is the premium vinyl cut setting. However, if you are using a Cricut Maker 3 or Cricut Explore 3, then you might wanna try out or do a test cut with the premium vinyl permanent glossy for this. The test cuts are just so key, y'all. I've said it once, I've said it a million times, that basically what, what might work for my machine may not work for you and your machine just because of the whole blade wear and tear. It's gonna be different for everyone. So just keep that in mind. But let's go ahead and put this onto our cutting mat real quick. And by the way, if you are getting value out of this, if you're learning anything new, or if you're being inspired in any way, shape or form, consider stooping that subscribe button and also ringing that little bell for all of the notifications because y'all do not want to miss out on a single crafty or cricket minute. All right, so that is now on our mat. Let's go ahead and come over here to browse all materials. And let me just do a search for premium. Now I'll click on premium vinyl and then done. Now we can go ahead and load this into our machine and get started cutting. All right, so that's all done cutting. Let's go ahead and flip this mat over and then peel that mat away from that vinyl. And now it's time for our next layer, our next sheet of vinyl, which is this orange color right over here. Let's go ahead and load this onto the mat as well. And we'll also load this into the machine and keep the exact same cut settings. Let's go ahead and flip this over and peel the mat away from the vinyl on this one as well. And we'll also go ahead and just trim out our design from this vinyl as well. And to weed all this out, I am using the Pin Pin weeding tool. In my opinion, it's the best weeding tool that is currently on the market. 
All right, so I am using a different transfer tape or at least a transfer tape that I don't often use. And that's mainly because I cannot find my other transfer tape right now. I have no idea where it's went, but this is the Caesar brand and it's actually a really good transfer tape as well. It's very similar to the clear medium tech transfer tape that I like to use a lot. All right, so I'm just laying this transfer tape out, sticky side facing up towards me. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and take my design, final side facing down and just apply it down to the transfer tape. I'll grab a little squeegee tool and then just burnish that down. And as you can see, it is now here on my vinyl. However, before I actually apply this down to our pizza pan, I am wanting to go ahead and kind of decorate it up with the other elements first, just so we know that wherever we place this is gonna be perfect for the particular snowman. So let me go ahead and grab that real quick. And let me also grab this little scarf right here. So basically this scarf is going to act as a scarf for the snowman. So what I'm going to do is kind of lay this all out. And let me go ahead and fold this little scarf in half, just like that. All right, so as far as positioning goes, I'm thinking somewhere along these lines. It means pretty even, wouldn't you say? Um, so we're just gonna roll with that. And what I'll do is go ahead and grab my little hot glue gun, whip this up, and then just squirt some of this down onto the scarf. And then position this back over top of that. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap this around and kind of figure out how I want everything to be kind of styled with the scarf. All right, so one thing's for sure, I do want there to be some glue right here on the outer rim of this pizza pan to kind of hold the scarf into place. So I'll go ahead and grab my hot glue gun again and then just kind of go down this little area. We'll do the exact same thing with the other side. And now I'm just gonna basically go through here and kind of just position everything the way that I want it to be. And then go in here with the hot glue gun and just kind of add in support wherever I need it for the scarf to stay where I want it. All right, so this is the scarf so far. Now, I do wanna give him a hat that matches. However, I don't actually have a hat made from the same material. So what I'm gonna do is actually use another scarf from the Dollar Tree, this exact same scarf. And what we'll do is go ahead and make him a faux, like a faux hat, so to speak, with that scarf. Now I do know that I want the hat to have a little bit of a brim to it. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that I have enough of the extra material down here towards the bottom of where I'm placing this, just so I can actually flip that up. And as far as the rest of it goes, I think that's a pretty good location for everything. So let me go ahead and lift this up and we'll go in here with the hot glue gun. And then as far as our little brim goes, what I'm gonna do is go in here and then put a little bit of hot glue behind that just to keep that held up. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and flip over the entire pan. And basically just try to bring some of this around and kind of figure out where everything's gonna go. And obviously we will need to go in here and actually trim off the excess of the, of the fabric as well. So I'm gonna go in here and get some of this off just from the start. And let's go ahead and kind of glue that down here as well. And then let's wrap around this other side. Again, we, we do have plenty of enough of that fabric, so let me go ahead and trim off some of that as well. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and turn around all of this and then go in here with my scissors and just put in these little slits at the top of the scarf up here for his hat. That way, whenever we go in here and actually tie around all this together, it's just kind of like that little poofy kind of look to it at the top of the hat, like so. Now to kind of tie all this off, I am just gonna use a little rubber band. And if we do it right, you won't even be able to see the rubber band once we're done. All right, so now I'm gonna go in here with my, with my vinyl and apply this down. So I have already burnished this down to the transfer tape. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and flip this over and then peel that backing paper off of the vinyl. And using that same piece of transfer tape, I'll go ahead and do the same thing with this little, with this little carrot. Now I should be done right about now, but I'm kind of wishing this hat was just a little bit more full, I guess. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take this little rubber band off and then open all this up and then go in here with the little, extra little pieces of this fabric 
and just stuff it in. All right, now we can go in here and kind of close all this back off with that rubber band. Now, if you are new around here to this channel, consider taking two quick seconds to stamp that subscribe button and also consider ringing that little bell for all of the notifications because y'all do not want to miss out on a single Crafty or Cricut Minute. Also, if you liked today's episode or maybe you learned something new, consider stamping that like button and dropping a comment down in the comment section below. Both of those things help me out tremendously here on YouTube. It only takes a few seconds to do, and I'm always just so extremely grateful for everyone who takes the time to do that. Thank you all so much for watching. I love all of y'all to the freaking moon and back, and until next time, stay crafty, y'all.